everybody, it's Mrs. Pound, and we are studying Chapter 11 on Chemical Calculations from BJU Chemistry's 5th edition. Today, we're going to cover Section 11.1b on Formulas and Percent Composition. So our objectives for today will be to distinguish between structural, molecular, and empirical formulas and to calculate the percent composition of a substance when given the mass of each of its elements. So there are three types of formulas. The first is a structural formula, and structural formulas show the types of atoms involved, the exact composition of each molecule, and the arrangement of chemical bonds. So some structural formulas are for water, which is H2O, we have the hydrogens bonded to the oxygen, and it even shows uh, the relative shape of the molecule as well. Uh, water is actually a bent molecule, and so we represent that in its structure. And the structure of acetic acid is this. We have two carbons bonded together, and one of the carbons has three hydrogens, and the other one has an oxygen double bonded to it and a hydroxyl group bonded to it, an OH. So that is acetic acid and water as structural formulas. Molecular formulas show the types and numbers of atoms involved as they appear in the molecule. And this is the one that we probably use the most often. Structural formulas give us the most information, but this is convenient for when we're writing, say, chemical equations. So for water, it's H2O, and for acetic acid, it's CH3COOH. Now, we do not group the carbons and the hydrogens together for this because this CO group, the C, COOH at the end actually tells us that it is an acid. And so sometimes with structural or with uh, molecular formulas, we will have different groupings, so it's easier to tell what type of molecule it is. And then there are empirical formulas. These tell what elements are present and give the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in the compound. So for that, it's H2O, which is water, because it's already in simplest form. So sometimes the molecular formula and the empirical formula are the same, but not always, such as is the case with acetic acid. Now we have C2H4O2, and we reduce that to CH2O. So even though this is a molecule, it's not an ionic compound, it's a molecular compound, it has covalent bonds. We actually treat it as if it is an ionic compound by reducing it down to its lowest terms. Now that we have this information, we're going to talk about percent composition. And this describes the mass composition of a compound by showing what percent of its total mass comes from each element. And the reason we're going to talk about this is because we're then going to be able to use this percent composition to get the formulas. This is how scientists basically figured out how to write those formulas as they started out with percent composition. So an example of a percent composition problem would be a 30 gram sample of aluminum sulfate contains 4.731 grams of aluminum, 8.436 grams of sulfur, and 16.833 grams of oxygen. What is the percent composition? So for percentages, it's always the part over the whole times 100%. So we're going to take the parts, each element, and divide the mass of the part by the mass of the whole. So for instance, for aluminum, the part is 4.731 grams of aluminum over 30 grams of aluminum sulfate. So I took the part, I'm dividing it by the whole, multiplying by 100, and I get 15.77% aluminum. Remember, significant figures, and both of these numbers have four, so I'm good. For sulfur, we take the part, the 8.436 grams, we divide it by the whole of 30 grams of the aluminum sulfate, multiply by 100, and we get 28.12% sulfur. And again, we're sticking with the four sig figs. And finally, with our oxygen, 
we take the part, 16.833 grams, divide it by the 30 grams of aluminum sulfate, multiply by 100 and get 56.11% oxygen. Now notice with these percentages, it does not line up with the number of atoms because as we can see, uh, different elements have, are just more massive than others. The atoms are more massive, so they will have more mass. So you cannot go by the numbers of atoms of each one. So the last thing you should do for these is do a check and make sure that everything adds up to 100%. And here it does. If it doesn't add up to 100%, you did something wrong and you should go back and check your work. Now, I could also give you this problem and say, just find the percent composition of aluminum sulfate. And just, and you're looking at it like, well, you didn't give me any information. I did, I gave you a formula. So how could we use a formula to find the percent composition? If I give you just a formula, you will assume you have a one mole sample. And to find the mass of one mole, you find the molar masses, which we learned how to do in the last video. So the first thing we do is we go to our periodic table. And so aluminum, we see that the molar mass of aluminum is 26.98154. So we see in the formula that we have two moles of aluminum and one mole of aluminum sulfate. So we multiply two times 26.98154 and we get 53.96 grams. I am rounding this off because I'm rounding it off to the hundredths place because that's basically, we had four significant figures for our last problem. So I'm just keeping it that way so we don't have too many numbers. So then we move on to the sulfur and we see, oh, one there times the three outside the parentheses, that's three moles of sulfur. So we have to find the molar mass of sulfur. So I go to my periodic table, I see that it's 32.065. So I multiply three times 32.065 grams and I get 96.20 grams. Now my oxygen, I have four here three, so four times three is 12. I have 12 moles of oxygen in one mole of aluminum sulfate. So I go to oxygen and find that it's 15.9994. So I multiply 12 times 15.9994 grams and I get 192 grams. And like I was saying, uh, there are, is a lot more oxygen and it's a little bit, it's 16 grams. So there's a lot more mass there of the oxygen than the other two. And so it's going to have a higher percentage than the other two elements. And I add them up and I get 342.16 grams is the molar mass of aluminum sulfate. So now I have my parts and I have my whole using the molar masses of the elements and of the compound. So now I go back to and do just what I did in the last problem. I use my equation part over whole times 100%. So for aluminum, I have my part that I calculated is 53.96 grams. I divided it by the whole that I calculated of 342.16 grams times 100 and get 15.77% aluminum which is the same number I got with the other method by knowing the experimental masses. For sulfur, I take my part of 96.20 grams, divide it by my whole, multiply by 100 and get 28.12% sulfur. And finally for the oxygen, I have 192 grams, which was my part over my whole of 352.16 grams, multiply by 100 and get 56 0.11% oxygen. And I could do my check, but I know that the numbers are exactly the same as the previous problem. And they should always match like that. 
um, because the percentages will not change because these formulas are fixed. It's the same compound, so the percent composition will be the same whether you figure out this experimentally or theoretically. So the theoretical is just going by the formula. It works both ways. So now I could ask you with this information, how many grams of oxygen would a 65 gram sample of aluminum sulfate contain? Well, I know the, now know the percentage of oxygen, okay? The percentage of oxygen is 56.11%. So I can set up a percentage ratio, 56.11 over 100 equals X because I'm trying to find the part over the whole of 65 grams. Cross multiply and I get 100X equals 3,647 grams. Divide each side by 100 and I get X equals 36.47 grams of oxygen and 65 grams of aluminum sulfate. So these are all the types of problems that I would expect you to know how to do for percent composition. So our objectives for today's video were to distinguish between structural, molecular, and empirical formulas and calculate the percent composition of a substance when given the mass of each of its elements. So don't forget your five questions in the margin, and I'll be back with another video.